That was really cool drone footage, wasn't it? Today, I wanna to talk to you guys about roof ice snow melting cables. And some homes are predisposed to ice dams and the leaks that result from them. And that's, you know, causes of a lack of insulation, warm air leaks, complex roof designs, ventilation issues, there's lots of things that contribute and preventing them requires addressing those issues. But it's not always easy to do and ideally, you need to get into the attic and insulate the roof from the inside and sometimes it's too expensive, invasive, or you just can't get in there, or it's inaccessible. In this case, you have two choices. You can treat the, the symptoms with a roof rake, basically remove the snow every single time it snows, or you can treat the root cause with gutter, roof, and heating cables. So we think about what is an ice dam leak. An ice dam is a ridge of ice that forms on the edge of the roof and prevents water from draining off the roof. And they basically occur after a snowfall and get bigger and bigger after several days of freezing. Heat loss from the house basically travels to that underside of the roof surface and causes problems in three ways. Conduction, warming up the building frame, convection, rising air, as well as is radiation. The heat melts the, the snow on the roof and it runs down the underside of the snow and when it reaches the roof's edge, it freezes forming an ice dam. This blocked dam now pools water behind it because it's got a warm edge behind it and it causes, a dam it causes damage with roof leaks and mold issues and all kinds of problems. So when we talk about roof cables, um, I often folks often don't have the budget to insulate and, and, and deal with these problems with a large scale renovation. So what I always do is I try to get my clients to think about other options like heating cables. I use a company called Warm Up Incorporated for the de-icing cables. And these are smart cables and controllers and sensors that work to create channels for the ice and water to, to get off of the roof. It basically keeps paths open so that the dam doesn't block the water. And it keeps the gutters flowing as well. Um, the goal here, the ultimate goal, is to get the water off the roof, through the gutters, and out before it refreezes again. And that's what we try to accomplish with these cables. Warm up ice, snow, and melting cables are used on all types of roofs, from rubber, metal, clay, and asphalt. We recently installed it on an asphalt system, and let's talk about how I designed the system. When I'm working or looking at a client's home, I often think about where the outdoor uh, power will start, or where the electrical power for the home is. And I want to make sure that the house can accommodate at least a 30 amp breaker. And if not, I advise the clients that they we're going to upgrade the box to add some, some size to that, some space. The next thing is my starting point. I want to start my cable in the best accessible location for my power connection, you know, so the electrician can get power from the box to my outdoor box. Then I start thinking about cable length. And once I start thinking about how much cable is required, and the simplest way to do this is to take a photo of the house and draw my drawings and my measurements on that photo. For instance, I measure the roof's edge, I measure the roof's overhang, I measure the lengths of my gutters and downspouts. I take a photo, I write all my measurements on this, and then I ship it out to warm up. And basically the, the folks there will basically send you back an estimate telling you what you need. As far as the wire pattern, the roof gutter and heating cable is installed in a triangular sawtooth pattern. It's spaced with two foot intervals. It's super important that you go from the roof's overhang all the way up extending into the section of the roof to the, what I call the warm section of the roof. And this is where the exterior wall intersects the roof. Um, a rule of thumb is try to get past that intersecting wall at least six inches. Another rule of thumb is when we get to valleys. Valleys are areas where snow builds up and there's a lot of roof drainage in those areas. And sometimes they can be a problem area. You want to go at least three or four feet up into a valley at a minimum. And remember to calculate this, add this to your cable length when you're figuring out your cable. For securing the cable to the roof, we use warm up special aluminum clips and they basically hold the loop. We screw them down to the uh, roof under the shingles. There's an overlap there and it's a great approach. Um, but unfortunately, not every roof is the same. So sometimes you have to do what I call MacGyver it, which is improvise and adapt. 
Hey, if you were if you were born after 1992, you might not know who MacGyver was, but he was this TV hero that uh, basically his name made it into the dictionary. He would escape life-threatening situations without a firearm, and he favored science, improvising, and engineering with cobbled together engineering and. and know-how. And I'm not advocating that you cobble anything together. What I am saying is that there are different fascia, roof, and gutter configurations, and sometimes you have to adapt your approach for installing the gutter and heating cable. Um, so while there is always a roof clip at the top, you may use different methods on the bottom. And I, and I go through that in, the, in my article a little bit, but some of the variations you might use is you might use two clips on the lower end of the roof. You might use uh, UV resistant zip ties on the gutter um, cross bands, or you might even uh, attach a clip to a metal leaf guard if you have a leaf guard covering over your gutter. With self, and you would use self drilling or self tapping screws. Um, all of these things, you could even use adhesive for the roof clips if, if it was a tough installation. Let's talk about installing the wire through the gutter. Um, the cable has to run through the gutter and otherwise the gutter is just going to turn into a, a solid block of ice. The cable basically runs under the gutter straps and you need to use care when you're pulling the cable through the gutter not to damage it. I basically uh, attach my wire to an electrical, electric, electrician's fish tape and I pull my wire through. When I get to downspouts, you have to watch out because there's a transition there and there's a lot of sharp edges, so you have to make sure that you don't cause damage to your wire. But for downspout, downspouts that end um, above the soil line, you can run your downspout down and loop it back up. But just don't leave it out too far. You don't want to damage it. If there's a dry well associated to your downspout, you want to try to make sure you get that cable down below the frost line. And that can be a challenge because some areas, like my area, the frost line can go down two to four feet. So you, want, you might have to excavate. Um, if you have a midline or an inline downspout, you sometimes have to do what we call like a loop, a loop down and a loop back up. And to do that, I basically usually, I run my fish tape up the gutter. I tape it to a loop of wire. And I basically estimate that wire by holding it down and looping it back up and kind of getting an eyeball of what I think it is. I tape the wire to it and I pull it down through the pipe. When I get to the bottom, I remove the fish tape and I can adjust the wire by pulling up and down on it as needed. Um, the, a good tip or a good thing to know is that uh, the, when you get to that slack area, you do have room, there's room for error, so you can pull the wire down or pull the wire up, but it sometimes takes two people to do that. As far as uh, connecting my system to power, my electrician handles all the power connections and then attaches a controller. And I always factor and figure my installations by, by the starting point where he's going to bring his power. So I start my cable there and then I run my installation. You want to make sure that you use only UL listed waterproof exterior boxes. And when you get to the end of your run, the very end of the cable, you want to uh, finish it off with a, a warm up name end kit, NAM end kit. And this basically ensures that you have an like, electrically safe as well as waterproof connection. If you find that you're getting to the end of your run and you're running out of space or running out of wire, go back a few steps and widen your triangles or shorten them a little bit if you can to, to finish it out. As far as controlling the system, we use the DS8C sensor, controller sensor. It senses moisture and temperature. And it has a corded interlevered sensor kit that runs up into the gutter and it senses freezing rain, snow, and, and, and temperature as well. It's very sensitive, including a snowflake will set this thing off. So um, it should be installed in the gutter facing up on the fascia board with a one inch C-style conduit clip. And you basically want to part, allow part of the sensor to be exposed to rainfall so it will trigger when snow falls. And it will remain triggered as long as the roof gutter heater continues to um, sense drip snow or water and the water temperatures and the air temperatures, you know, warrant it. So it will stay on. It's smart. It has a moisture grid that always stays hot. The sensor stays hot. And actually this is normal because it allows it to melt the snow from the grid. So it can always read the, the environment properly. Maintenance required is you need to clean your gutters. Warm-up re uh, recommends checking the insulation resistance with a, a 2500 VDC mega. And you know the reading, you would take the reading off the connection cable between the bus wire and the grounding braid. And that minimum acceptable reading should be 20, uh, 20 megs. The, um, the wire, the sensor, the controller should be checked every fall, maybe even trigger it on, as well as you should clean that sensor we talked about with, uh, with some cleaning solution. 
you need to be proactive if you're gonna rectify a, an ice dam problem on your home. So installing a self-regulating cable system will melt the snow and ice and keep that drain path of water flowing down that roof line through your gutters and away from your house. I consider this roof and gutter system basically an investment and cheap insurance to your home. I'm Rob Robillard, we'll see you next time. Take care.